scheduled vascular disease. This method provides information, first of all, about change in the size and change in configuration of the heart due to uh, um, change in uh, the projection of the main chambers. On the change in the position and size of uh, large measured vessels, large measured ranks like aorta and pulmonary artery, and on the state of pulmonary circulation and condition in the system of pulmonary circulation, including stagnation of the blood. So first of all, change in the size and configuration, change the position and localization of the heart inside the chest and on the state of the pulmonary circulation. And we can differentiate it with your two main techniques. First of all, it's fluoroscopy, it's the ability to observe a pulsating heart and blood vessels, changing the position of the patient. And radiography allows to register the position of the heart in the uterus position and to detail the change in the shadow of the heart. In fact, um, in case of radiological or X-ray of the chest, we can determine whether you only shadow of the heart or like a shadow of the lungs. It will be not exactly um, the organs, yes. In terms of uh, X-ray, uh, we will discuss it with you shadows. It's a special It's a special term uh, for uh, radiological um, diagnostics. So, anginological examination of the heart is carried out in several standard projection. And first of all, it's direct projection. What it is direct projection? When the patient is standing by facing by face to the screen with his chest. And look to up a picture. There. It's a screen and there is position uh, of the chest of the patient and there is position of the face, yes? So when the patient stand in face to face with the screen, in this projection, look to the scheme. First of all, we will determine the chamber of the right ventricular and by, up, um, by the oblique line, we can determine the chamber of the left ventricular. In the right anterior oblique projection, this projection when the patient is located and standing at an angle of 45 degree with the right shoulder forward to the screen. And look next picture, it was first picture or direct projection second picture or the right anterior oblique projection also it's the place of screen and patient take the screen and stand uh, to screen by the right shoulder in this projection we can assess a part of the lungs yes there look there right ventricular chamber and left ventricular chamber and the shadow of another lung. Third type projection in the left front oblique projection with the left shoulder folder. It's the same projection with the right anterior oblique projection, the same scheme, but in these cases, the patient uh, standing to the screen by the left shoulder in the angle of the 45 degree. Again, it's a place of a screen So there we can determine left uh, lung, more better detectable the pathology of the left ventricular, next right ventricular chamber and the right lung. Uh, and uh, the last type of projection is the left side projection when the patient standing to the face of the screen exactly by the left shoulder, but not only touching on the angle, exactly by, exactly by the left side. So look, it's place of screen. And in this projection, more detectable, first of all, shadow of uh, the lung, of the left lung, yes. Then 
practically all chamber of the left ventricular, right ventricular chamber, and uh, the last floor, it's uh, the right lung. So four types of projection during uh, um, a radiological examining. So direct projection. When the patient standing in front of the screen, it's a scheme of a direct projection, a scheme of uh, X-ray. Look in the direct projection, it's It's a lung from the both sides, yes, or shared of the lungs. Look to the projection or shared of the heart, direct projection. First of all, it's a round of right atrium. Yes, and if you remind Brown about front surface of the heart, to the projection of the anterior chest wall. Yes, you remind that the right border formed by the right atrium. So this arc formed by the right atrium. There, it's atrial vessels angle from the right side. Next, it's contour of the vena cava superior. Next, it's contour of ascending part of aorta. Look, vena cava superior. The bundle of vessels consists from the aorta, trunk of pulmonary artery, and in the middle part, it's vena cava superior. Yes. So first of all, it's small part of a vena cava superior, and the angle between vena cava superior and the arc of the right atrium formed uh, by atrial vessels angle there. So next, ascending part of aorta. Look, arc of aorta. Next, descending part of aorta. It's a contour of a trunk of pulmonary artery. There, place of wave of the heart. And we discussed it with you on the practical skills that wave of the heart formed by the initial part of the trunk of the pulmonary artery and uh, the uh, auricus of the left uh, atrium. So this contour or this arc, it's exactly left atrium and exactly it's a ricus of the left uh, atrium. And the last, the most big arc and contour, it's a left ventricular. These departments, we can differentiate it on the direct projection during X-ray of the chest. And look, try to find the same, but on the X-ray of the chest. Try to find this contour. So first big contour, contour of the right atrium. Right atrium. And right body of the heart formed by the right atrium, yes? So next, atrium vessels angle. Atrium vessels angle. There is it. Next, the part of the vena cava superior. Next, the contour of the ascending part of aorta. There, very difficult to differentiate it, arc of aorta. Yes, but in fact, look, shadow to shadow, it will be the air, arc of aorta. This is what? This is a distending part, distending part of our water. And there, under this shadow, will be the initial part of the pulmonary artery. Its contour, its projection of the left atrium. And the big arc. It's a shadow of the left ventricular.
Yes, so weight of the heart between the trunk of pulmonary artery and the left atrium. Because um, we have to pay attention to weight of the heart for different, different configuration of the heart. Next projection, left front oblique projection, when the patient standing by the left uh, shoulder on the angle of the 35 degree to the screen. On this projection, uh, better detected changes in the size of the left ventricle uh, in the uh, structural aorta and in the structure of the left atrium. And look, it's a scheme of formation of left front oblique projection. We can differentiate it there in the middle inside the shadow of um, inside the structure of the shadow of the heart, different parts, yes, because um, the muscle um, of the myocardia uh, have normally uh, the same density on the same density of the shadows. But we can differentiate it also contours. And look, there will be contour of the right ventricular. There will be small contour of the right atrium. It's a big contour of ascending part of aorta. It's an arch of aorta. aorta. It's aortic window. It's a special term for X-ray. Aortic window under the uh, arch of aorta. aorta. From the another side, it's a contour of the left atrium and the big mass, the big contour of the left ventricular. So in left front oblique projection, which changes uh, will be more detectable? Surely changes the size of the left ventricular, expanding the walls, yes, because uh, we have to know that there is additional spaces between the left ventricular and uh, the vertebra, and we can assess uh, this space uh, with the uh, aorta, because it's good projection about ascending part of aorta and uh, about arch of aorta, and about left Atrium. Right front oblique projection when the patient um, standing to the screen by the right shoulder on the angle of the 45 degree to the screen. In this projection, better detect changes in the size of the left atrium, right ventricle, and pulmonary tract. And uh, uh, let's uh, look to the scheme of this projection. Look, a small part of left ventricle, big middle part of the right ventricle, small contour there of the right atrium, big contour and big part of the left atrium, then a cava superior and the same shadow with uh, the distending part of aorta. It will be next lower. And from another side, it will be ascending part of aorta. There will be a contour of pulmonary artery. So if we look to this projection, if we uh, take a look to this uh, picture, uh, it will be understand for us that more detectable problem with pulmonary trunk because it's simple to uh, find uh, some um, dilatation, some expansion, some any reason the projection of the pulmonary artery with the right ventricular because we can assess this dilatation and increasing in the size this contour by the base part and uh, with the left atrium because the big mass in the right front oblique projection pushing in the mass of the left atrium.
X-ray research methods. What we have to anal uh, analyze uh, and interpret um, after taking X-ray. First of all, the shape of the chest and we can assess the shape on the shape and condition of the chest, the condition of the skeleton of our patient, and the level of standing and the right and way of standing diaphragm. We can um, analyze and interpret uh, the state of pulmonary circulation, the position of the heart in the chest, the contour of the heart shadow, signs of dilatation and various of various parts of the heart and location and size of the aorta and pulmonary artery. These are um, six main points during an uh, interpretation X-ray. The state of blood vessels of the pulmonary circulation. So possible types of pulmonary circulation disorders which we can determine during X-ray. Hypervolemic type of pulmonary arterial hypertension pulmonary arterial hypovolemia, hypovolemia and pulmonary arterial hypertension due to increased pulmonary vascular resistance. These are three types of pulmonary disorders we can determine after interpretation X-ray. Hypervolemic pulmonary arterial hypertension or hypervolemic in the pulmonary uh, cycle of circulation. Uh, which reasons can uh, lead to um, development hypervolemic um, pulmonary hypertension? Pathological discharge of the blood from the from left to right, non-closure of the botanic death, uh, botanic duct like a congenital damaging or defect of the breast. Which signs we can determine? Expansion of large arterial trunks of the root area. The vascular pattern to the peripheral sharply straightened, and the pulmonary arteries rails and increase in the right ventricle shadow or the shadow of the right ventricle. And look to the spectra pulmonary blood flow conditions and pulmonary hypertension. Look, it's normally, uh, it's the state of um, uh, the artery like black uh, color and uh, the purple color, it's a condition of um, uh, the dance um, in the pulmonary circulation. In case of pulmonary hypertension, we can determine with you increasing in the size and enlarge and dilatation the roots of um, not, not, not roots, uh, dilatation and increasing in the size artery in the projection of the roots. And look, increasing pattern uh, uh, on the distal part of the lungs, but also look to the contour of the heart. It's a contour of the heart in Noma. Yes. And look to this contour we can find with you expanded the right border and expanded contour of the right atrium. And we discussed with you that expanding, it means dilatation, yes, so some damaging in the size, in the side of dilatation, uh, which uh, will be um, a sign of us of stagnation in the um, system of the small cycle of circulation of pulmonary stagnation. So, Arterial hypovolemia, which causes pulmonary vascular embolism, malformation with discharge from right to left, and which sim symptoms we can determine. Increased pulmonary transparency and depleted pulmonary pattern. And look, with um, pulmonary hypotension, it's mistakes. Yes, look, it's normal. It's the same picture. It's a noma. And if we uh, um, try to consider this, look to the arterial uh, type of vessels, decreasing the volume, decreasing the bloody supply, decreasing uh, the distance between uh, the lumen, this de mm, decreasing the distance between the wall. It's all types of hypovolemia, yes? But normally structure of the dance, arterial hypovolemia. Pulmonary 
pulmonary arterial hypertension due to increased pulmonary resistance, which causes, first of all, stenosis of the, the mitral valve or pulmonary artery, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, like a primary cause of development stagnation, and primary pulmonary hypertension, and acute and chronic left ventricular heart failure. Which signs? Expansion of the trunk and large branches of the pulmonary artery, uh, the um, improvement of the pulmonary pattern on the periphery, on the distal part of the contour of the lungs, and right ventricular enlargement, like a stagnation of the blood and the small cycle of circulation. The nodules congestion in the pulmonary circulation, which causes left ventricular heart failure or mitral valve stenosis also can be a cause of stagnation, and which size on X-ray, the initial stage, expansion of the pulmonary vents only, and next it's a combination of signs of the nosostasis and pulmonary hypertension. Interstitial pulmonary edema develops and subsequently alveolar edema in the stage of the compensation. Interstitial pulmonary edema and after that alveolar pulmonary edema. Look, it's X-ray patient with the nodus congestion in the pulmonary circulation. First of all, uh, let's look to the projection of the heart, yes, to the contour of the heart. It's a contour of the right atrium, which formed from the right atrium in the middle. It's a place of right ventricular. Yes, look there, we can't differentiate it from which part expanded the right contour of the heart, but more often it contact with the damage in the right uh, part of the heart. And it's a left ventricular, yes? So if assessed, we can, exp we can find uh, uh, expanded the right part of the contour. And look about the nosus conjection. Look to the um, root of um, the lungs. Congestion of the blood and the projection of the root. If we try to assess the peripherally structure of the lungs, yes, we can't find uh, um, so detectable uh, the lungs pattern during assess. Which signs of intestinal pulmonary edema during X3 we can find with you? Poverty of pulmonary, uh, pulmonary vascular pattern in the periphery, varicose dense mainly in the upper lobes, redistribution of blood flow, curly lines, septum, appears fluid accumulation in interlobal septums, and expansion and decreased pulsation of the trunk of the pulmonary artery. Uh, we can determine with your pulsation, but we can de we can determine uh, on X-ray expansion uh, at the contour of the pulmonary artery. So it's uh, about pulmonary pattern on the view of uh, heart damage. X-ray of the heart in direct projection. Uh, surely, first of all, we can assess with your heart position inside the chest. It is determined by the angle of inclination to the horizontal of uh, the leaf of the heart shoulder. And later, uh, it's a line which connecting the right atriodesal corner with the apex of the heart. Right atriodesal corner, or atriodesal corner. Let's reach one in. Look, atrial. Atrial vessel angle, yes, or atrial vessel corner between the contour of the right atrium and, uh, and between the projection of the um, superior tena cava. Look from this point till the apex of the heart. So in heart position, we can determine after assessing this um, leaf. 
uh, which lime connecting uh, the atrial diesel, uh, vessel angle with the apex of the heart. And in direct projection, we can differentiate, differentiate it with your free normal variance uh, position of the heart inside the chest. First of all, it's nomostenic position, which significantly for a patient with nomostenic condition. The angle of inclination of the lathe of the heart is 45 degree, or it's oblique position of the heart. Asthenic position of the heart inside the chest, uh, when this angle will be more than 45 degree. Also, we can call the detical position of the heart. And hypersthenics when um, this angle will be less than 45 degree. In this case, we can talk about horizontal position. So nomosthenic position, asthenic position, and hypersthenic position. Position of the heart depends from the angle, yes, um, of inclination, the horizontal line of the lathe of the, uh, uh, of the, lift, uh, of the heart schedule. And look, first, it's normal. Atrial vessel angle line, which connect with the apex of the heart. And this level of the horizontal line or level of the base of the heart. In fact, it's a level of the diaphragm on the bishemius. So then this angle will be 45. We can talk about normally normasthenic position or normally position of the heart. When this angle will be more than 45 and look to this heart. Vertical position, yes, significant for patient with asthenic type of the chest. Vertical position or asthenic position. And when this angle will be less than 45, We can talk about horizontal position of the heart or um, hypersthenic position of the heart, which is significant for patients with hypersthenic type of the chest. <clears throat> So also uh, during analysis the X-ray, we can determine with you and we have to interpret it as different changes in the position of the heart inside the chest. And these changes um, can, uh, can be due to, first of all, pathological changes in the lungs. We can explain it through the lungs. Pathological changes in the pleural cavities, aperture position, Pathological changes in the chest, curvature of the spine, deformation of the chest, and X-ray examination of the heart shadows in standard projections allows you to identify mainly dilatation of ventricles and atria, or mainly uh, damaging of the affected uh, chambers of the heart. So, and about pathological configuration of the heart. In some part, we discussed with you on the practical class when uh, they spoke with you about the pathological configuration of the heart, uh, which we can determine during percussion of the heart region. But also we can determine this pathological um, configuration of the heart during X-ray diagnostic methods, but notably mitral and aortic configuration. Yes, we can determine some more. So about pathological configuration of the heart. So it's first of all mitral configuration, which significant uh, for mitral insufficiency and mitral stenosis. Yes, and we can uh, characterize this pathological configuration by smoothing weight of the heart. Smoothing weight, weight we determine between the trunk of pulmonary artery and uh, the auricles uh, of uh, the left atrium. Uh, this mitral configuration will determine due to hypertrophic dilatation of left atrium first, firstly, and its condition about mitral stenosis and mitral insufficiency. Sometimes hypertrophy of left ventricular also can um, shift in the upper border, some upper due to dilatation, hypertrophy of left ventricular, and left atrium will not um, affect it, but 
smoothing of the hat, uh, also uh, waist of the hat will be of, uh, also smoothing. So mitral configuration with smoothing waist of the hat. Next type of pathological configuration is aortic configuration, which characterized by the presence of an underlying waist or amplified waist in case of cardiovascular angle on the left is well defined. And in case of increase and enlargement and expansion of the chamber of the left ventricular, and it occurs with aortic heart defects and hypertension, arterial hypertension. First of all, aortic heart defects, which included aortic stenosis and aortic insufficiency, and uh, during arterial hypertension after affected to the left ventricular chamber after the end the stage of developing a left ventricular hypertrophy. So aortic configuration. Next type of pathological configuration, it's round or spherical heart. Due to right ventricular hypertrophy, it occurs in congenital heart disease in defect in the interventricular septum. Next type of pathological configuration is trapezius heart, occurs with the exudic exudative pericarditis. And the last type is a ball heart with an increase in all chamber size, combined detects, or in case of cardiomyopathies, which lead to increasing in the contours of the heart from all sides. So, and look for a picture, mitral configuration, uh, mitral configuration of the heart. Normal contour of the heart, yes. Uh, and this line, it will be change levels. And remind about our picture about mitral stenosis when we discussed with you that during mitral stenosis will affect two chambers, left atrium and right ventricular. So we uh, have to determine expansion of the right contour of the heart due to expansion right ventricular, which shift into the right uh, the contour um, from the right side and there, yes. And uh, on the X-ray, we can find it. And also uh, smoothing of the waist of the heart due to dilatation left atrium. And look, we can't, we can't determine waist of the heart. We can't find the angle between the pulmonary artery and um, between the auricles of the left atrium. So smoothing waist of the heart. And look to screen, yes, and it will be mitral configuration of the heart, which is significant for mitral stenosis and mitral insufficiency. Next, aortic configuration of the heart. Look first of all for scheme. Underline the waist of the heart due to an increase in the left ventricular or the left ventricular without water. Expansion the chamber of the left ventricular, increasing in the projection of the contour of the left ventricular look. If you look to this picture, to the projection of the heart, uh, the heart will be like a sitting duck, yes? Sitting duck, really, if you look to X-ray. And increase in the schedule of the heart to the left due to increase in the left ventricle, the waist of the heart. We spoke already about it, that the size of the waist will be the same, in fact. But uh, this waist will, will be amplified due to dilatation, the contour of the left ventricle. And the shift of the right atrial angle downward due to an increase in the arc of ascending aorta. Look, yes. So sitting duck, it's aortic heart configuration which is significant for aortic insufficiency, aortic stenosis, and arterial hypertension due to hypertrophy of the left ventricular. Next pathological type of configuration, trapezoidal heart. 
the horizontal position of the axis of the hat, horizontal position of the axis of anterior median line, axis of the hat, what it is, yes? It's the atrial basal angle plus the apex. And look, it's practically horizontal position. An increase in hat in both direction, it's a normally contour, expansion from the both sides, smoothing the waist of the hat due to increasing in the contour of uh, the pulmonary artery and increasing the contour of the left atrial more, and the smoothness of the arch of the left contour of the hat shadows. And look, there is between the right border, uh, between the right atrium and between the left border of the contour, uh, the left ventricular, with the level of diaphragm, we can determine with you two cardio diaphragmal angle from the both sides. Next, X-ray computer and magnetic resonance imaging of the heart, like next method of diagnostic. The most informative, informative methods of visualization of the heart and large vessels, uh, we can use in them successive uh, thin transverse and longitudinal section obtained, which especially in combination with the introduction of the contrasts medium allows you to get a high resolution image of the heart. In this case, the following are clearly related. Cardiac chambers we can assess, zones of myocardial infections and zones of echinesis and zones of hyperkinetics, zones of myocardial ischemia. We can assess bloody supply of the mm, lower of the myocards, left ventricular aneurysm, intracardiac thrombosis, during mag um, magnetic resonance imaging, absence of uh, which the main difference between uh, com X or computer uh, CT scan and uh, um, magnetic resonance imaging, absence of ionizing radiation. Yes, and some in other uh, country, uh, some in other um, contributing for um, MRI. And just a picture with a CT scan. And look, it's a picture from CT scan, one portion of them. Lower by, by lower, and the duration between the lower and the resistance between the lower, not more than three millimeters. Yes, lower by lower, and we can multiply the um, uh, multiply the 3D uh, structure of the chest and 3D structure uh, of the heart and all internal organs. Next method diagnostics, uh, the most important for us um, during the diagnostic of cardiovascular diseases, and also it's uh, X-ray method of diagnostics or radiological, it's coronary angiography or coronary graphy. Coronary angiography is an invasive, it's invasive type of X-ray or radiological, it uh, was non-invasive method of researching, Coronary angi angiography, it's an invasive diagnostics method performed under X-ray conditions by introducing a contrast medium into the mouth of the coronary arteries under the radiological control. Despite the rapid development of non-invasive examination methods, coronary artery angiography remains for us the gold standard in the diagnostic of coronary artery disease, in the diagnostic of ischemic heart disease. And this is currently the only method to determine the exact anatomical structure of the coronary blood flow. And look, there are two, um, the nozzles assess. Uh, from the side of the femoral then, it's so classically, but also there is arterial access from the radium uh, artery. And uh, some later uh, we will discuss this access. 
it, it's classically then a function it's in the zones of femoral veins and due to system of the then a cover uh, we put in the main introducing um, introducing in the arc of the aorta in the through the arc of the aorta to a standing part And look, during coronary angiography, we can assess the condition of uh, all coronary arteries. The left coronary artery is divided by two main branches, the anterior descending artery and the circumflex artery. Anterior descending artery supplies anterior wall, anterior ventricular septum, apex of the heart, part of the left ventricular side wall. Circumflex artery blood supplies posterior and lateral wall of the left ventricle and left atrium. And look, it's a scheme of uh, arteries uh, from uh, the anterior surface of the heart. Look, it's a trunk of our water. It's anterior descending branches, like the main, yes? Look, it's a right coronary artery, left coronary artery, right coronary artery, two main uh, trunks. Left coronary artery divided into uh, anterior descending part and circumflex. It's a front surface of the heart. Right coronary artery supplies right ventricle, pulmonary trunk, SA node, left ventricle allow wall and posterior interventricular septum. Uh, there are three types of coronary blood supply which determines by the condition of the posterior artery right left and mixed blood supply type and look it's a projection of the artery scheme of the arteries uh, coronary arteries from the um, back surface of the heart again it's our water Look, it's anterior, descending part, yes, anterior descending part. Orange color, it's arteries on the front surface, yes, uh, red color on the back surface. Look, it's a right coronary artery, which turning to the right and back part of the heart. It circumflex the last stage of circumflex artery, which circumflex from the left uh, shifting uh, of the heart, and uh, it's the trunk of our tongue. Which damaging uh, and which conditions um, we can find there? Uh, look at histolo histology pictures. It's a structure of the normal coronary artery. And look, it's not a scheme. Yes, it's uh, not a true that the coronary artery has a rounded shape. Normally, yes, elastic wall. Look, it's normally coronary artery with different density, with a uh, different, um, different duration of the walls. Not so round shaped lumen, but it's healthy, normal lumen of the coronary artery. Second picture, it's coronary artery complicated atherosclerotic plaque. Look, yes, it's atherosclerotic plaque from the one side of the wall with pre uh, pre non inclusive thrombosis. Look for color of the wall, but non uh, without occlusion. And the third, it's coronary artery, uh, coronary artery which occluded with the thrombosis. In case of in stage of main cadres and sexual with a ST elevation, yes, total occlusion with development of the thrombosis in the small part of the lumen of the artery. 
atherosclerotic plaque around it and the occlusion of the small lumen. Look, it's exactly picture of the coronary angiography. Look and try to find, try to assess all trunks of coronary arteries. Normally, normally, it's contrast. Yes, contrast in the structure of the coronary artery. Normal, normal. And there stopped supply. It means that it's obstruction or occlusion of the trunk of the coronary artery. Coronarography is indicated in three clinical situations. So about indications for coronary. First of all, to detect coronary artery damage, when the diagnosis of coronary artery disease cannot be established according to non-invasive tests, including ECG, including halter monitoring of ECG, including the um, valorgometry or treadmill tests, we can't determine the coronary artery damaging, but our patient tell us about clinic of stable engine or unstable, yes? Next, to determine the possibility of mercadial revascularization in case of established already coronary heart disease, uh, when they think about endovascular treatment of coronary artery bypass grafting. And the last one, to evaluate the long-term results after revascularization surgery or the results of drug treatment when we um, have to um, assess uh, the positive or negative results after our treatment. Surgery treatment, therapeutic treatment, we need to assess um, the uh, occlusion, uh, the atherosclerotic plaque. Abdul Rahman, please switch off your microphone. Thank you. Sorry, Dr. Ramsey. So, and look. Look to the same scheme, yes? Through the arc of our water, through the ascending part, from the femoral vein, from uh, the system of the Dana cava, we introduced the main source. And after Ringino X-ray control, we can put him down and we can flu uh, the contrasts, uh, uh, the contrast, um, the contrast sequences, yes. And after putting contrast dye, we can assess the blood supply, the level of blood supply uh, of the myocard. And it's only a scheme, yes, after putting down the contrast, it, exactly right now we can find neuron defeat of diastole, uh, the blood supply, and find the occlusion of coronary arteries, different levels. Factors uh, which determine an indication for coronary angiography, clinical manifestation of ischemic heart disease, objective signs of myocardial ischemia, clinical signs of myocardial ischemia, uh, pain inside the chest with classical localization, with classical irradiation, uh, but duration more than 15 minutes, yes, straight of the death, uh, all signs of the acute damaging of the myocardium. What about dates uh, of coronary growth? In real time, we can differentiate it. Emergency coronary growth uh, in case of a uh, fixed month and plant coronary agrethy with different type of duration. So emergency till the sixth month and plant coronary agrethy. Look on the first picture, we can determine with you atherosclerosis of the right coronary artery. It's not so right, yes, to, um, to give uh, such name of the picture, because look, we can determine that it's right coronary artery only by the contour, yes, because we can't uh, determine uh, there 
the aorta, the ascending, and the arc of aorta. So we can't determine the sinus of the uh, aortic um, coronary arteries. And in fact, we can assess only contour and take mind about right coronary artery. So, and it, there we can determine two pieces of occlusion of coronary artery. It's not a critical occlusion, yes, but it's a sign of stable angina pectoris, occlusion of the right coronary artery. On, on another picture, we can assess with you occlusion or atherosclerosis of the left coronary artery. Look, trunk of the left coronary artery, yes. Circumflex artery, descending part. Look there. Atherosclerotic, not good bloody supply, not good contour of the coronary artery, and there also atherosclerotic of the right coronary artery. If we discussed with you indications for coronary angiography, we have to discuss contraindication for coronary angiography. There are currently no absolute contraindications for large catheterization angiography, but uh, we have to discuss relative contraindications. First of all, it's un uncontrolled ventricular arrhythmias uncontrolled hypokalemia and intoxication, uncontrolled high arterial hypertension with the critical level of the blood pressure, various febrile condition, active endocarditis, allergy to contrast agents and iodine intolerance, acute and chronic renal failure about chronic vacuation depends from the clearance of creatinine, the, uh, depends uh, from the speed of filtration, active gastrointestinal bleeding, acute cerebrovascular accident, and severe anemia. It's a relative contraindication for coronary angiography. It's the way how, yes, uh, it's uh, x-ray surgery, it's cardiac surgery, uh, it's uh, the main method of cardiac surgery, the routine method for cardiac surgery. And uh, uh, look, uh, the doctor exactly during the procedure can assess the results from... Can you see my screen? Yes, teacher. So, and exactly during the procedure, a doctor can assess the result. Yes, exactly right now, can find occlusion, critical or not. And during this procedure, so coronary growth, it's not only um, diagnostic methodic. Yes, it's a treatment methodic also. But during this uh, diagnostic uh, method, um, um, the doctor can uh, applog in um, the stent uh, which leading to uh, dilatation and uh, which leading to reducing occlusion exactly during the procedure. So we discussed before it with you that there are two S's, yes? Two uh, arterial S's. You uh, can ask a question why the S's will be arterial but we started through the femoral vein, yes? Because through the system of veins, surely we're putting down the introduction in the system of arteries. First, um, access its arterial access from the femoral. It transducer in the right common femoral artery, impunction of the artery, and look, they introducing. Next, right common femoral artery, just a minute. Femoral common artery, right superficial artery, deep femoral artery, and femoral then sheet introducing. Look there, first of all, yes. So, femoral asses. Next type of SS is radiation SS from the radium artery. First of all, it's radio artery from the both sides, if possible. Radium artery. 
in the front ulnar artery, palmar artery, and introducer in the right radial artery. There is it, yes. I'm so sorry, just a minute. So two S's, radio masses uh, and femoral S's. So coronary angiogram analysis. Uh, what uh, we can find there? Anatomical type of blood is applied to the heart, right, left, and balance or mixed. Localization of lesion, of occlusion, trunk of the left coronary, uh, coronary artery, the anterior interventricular branch of the left coronary artery, the umbella branch of the left coronary artery, the anterior diagonal branch of the left coronary artery, and the right coronary artery and other branches. Localization of the lesion. Third one, the prevalence of the lesion, local or diffuse. And we can assess the degree of norvin of the lumen of the artery in percent. Hemodynamically significant is norvin of 70% or more, which can lead into critical conclusion. Also, we can assessment of collateral circulation also, we can identify, identify of coronary artery spasm and the presence of the myocardial bridge. The most adverse signs of coronary circulation in patients with coronary heart disease. It's damage to the trunk of the left coronary artery and uh, three vascular relation of the coronary artery, anterior interventricular artery or distending part, circumflex artery and right coronary artery, practically all main trunks. Norvin of the lumen of the coronary artery is more uh, than 70% uh, and weak development of collateral circulation. And about types of blood supply. The right type of coronary blood supply, the posterior descending artery, departs from the right coronary artery. Yes, and look to picture. The right type of, type of coronary blood supply, and it's a first picture, a right type of the coronary blood supply. First one, stenosis of the left coronary artery, Second one, look, yes, the nose of the left coronary artery. Second uh, number, it's anterior descending artery, anterior descending artery. Third one, envelope artery, envelope artery. And the last one there, right coronary artery, posterior branch, and posterior, uh, posterior and lateral branch. It's anterior and uh, posterior part of the heart. Left type of blood supply, the posterior distending artery departs from the envelope of the artery. It's 8% uh, of cases. Yes, left type of blood supply. First, it's trunk of the left coronary artery, it's a front view. Second one, it's anterior distending artery. Third one, it's envelope artery. Fourth, it's posterior lateral branch. And fifth, it's posterior branch. And on the back part, it's the right coronary artery. 
and balanced type of blood supply when the left coronary artery and the left uh, and the right coronary artery 70% of 7% of cases participated in the blood supply into the area of the posterior interventricular sulcus. The posterior branch departs from the enveloped artery about the front surface. First of all, it's trunk of the left coronary artery. Second number, it's anterior distinct in artery. Uh, third one, it's enveloped artery. And fourth, it's distending branch. And uh, from the posterior part, it's right coronary artery and back distending branches. It's a balanced type of blood supply. So about complications of coronary angi angiography. On the first place, it's mortality. Unfortunately, in the 21st in, in uh, century, it also can be present, yes, and uh, not more than 3% of the patient, but take um, a modem. Myocardial infection, an acute myocardial infection, cerebrovascular complications, Rhythm disturbance and developing different types of arrhythmias, vascular complications, contrast reaction like an allergic reaction for the contrast flu, hemodynamic instability and development um, acute heart failure, and perforation of the heart cavities due to catheterization of the chamber of the heart and due to catheterization of the trunk of the aorta. About computer tomography of the heart, which is spiral computer tomography or CT scan or um, uh, which is spiral computer tomography coronarography, because also during a CT scan we can use uh, contrasts, is performed for vascular examination and the research is carried out with intravenous bolus administration of the contrast medium and when CT scan is valued. In case of arterial lumen, assess the arterial lumen. In case of diagnosis of the atherosclerotic plaque, uh, to assess degree of stenosis of the coronary artery, to assess of the damage, damage localization, and exclusion of the coronary artery anomalies. But you I have to understand that it's two different methods. Coronary graphy, it's invasive, and it's exactly gold standard because we can assess the structure of the wall of artery, the presence of the plaque, and the structure of the plaque exactly by the visual way, yes? Co during the video and the picture registration. Uh, um, CT scan, it's non-invasive method of diagnostics, but also we can determine the damaging of the structure of the coronary artery. Um, more often, CT scan using for administrated and for determining calcinosis of the coronary arteries, like a sign of uh, atherosclerotic damaging in patients with uh, uh, chronic heart disease. So, and uh, it's a, a picture of the multispiral computer uh, tomography diagnostic using the contrast. Look, it's a scheme 3D uh, model of the heart when they can uh, determine blood supply also and look to the trunk of the right coronary artery there. It's occlusion, yes, it's acute um, problem and uh, exactly Above and uh, around this problem, we can determine some another uh, black color like a shadow of the heart, and it will be zones of hypokinesis in, in case of acute damaging. So no blood is applying, no artery, no trunk of the artery, no lumen of the artery, no blood in the, the lumen of the artery, in signs of occlusion, uh, this part of the artery. And what about magnetic resonance imaging? Also, we can use in it, but more often magnetic resonance uh, imaging and using for administrative and determining problem with the structure of the myocard, not with blood supply, but we can determine it, uh, damaging the coronary artery and blood supply 
and look. Yes, we can determine occlusion, present atherosclerotic plaque, not good shaders, uh, and uh, it will be uh, it will be sign of also for bad uh, way of blood supplying. Also, atherosclerotic damage and also occlusion. But we uh, can determine by visually, uh, visually by digital administration, video administration. Yes, it's only a picture. Also, non invasive method of diagnostics, but including contrast medium. So, I suggest to finish for today and continue about uh, heart echocardiography or ultrasound method of diagnostics of the heart on the next lecture. Oh, it's